Thank you. That is the most beautiful rendition I've ever heard of that song. Uh, wonderful. We're blessed week in and week out to have voices like that among us. So Russell Wilson, do you know that name? Do you know who he is? He's the quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks, and I've always thought he was a pretty good guy. Then one day, I read about a time he was traveling. He was passing through an airport. No pun intended, right? Quarterback passing. Anyway, he was passing through an airport, and he met a soldier. So he took a minute to stop and talk with the soldier, to thank him for his service. Then he went a step further, and he paid to upgrade that soldier's ticket to first class. What a nice gift to give. I also read about a woman named Ashley and a gift that she gave. It started when Ashley overheard her mother and her grandmother talking about a young man Ashley's age named Danny. Danny needed a kidney transplant. They just heard him and his mother telling this story on a local radio show. Danny was diagnosed with kidney disease at age 16. He'd been in kidney failure for a couple of years. Unfortunately, none of his relatives were eligible to donate a kidney, and there was no match to be found. So Danny, who was a soft-spoken electrician working full-time, had to undergo four he had to undergo four-hour dialysis treatments three times a week just to stay alive as he waited for a transplant. Well, after hearing about him, Ashley's heart was moved. So the next day, on her 25th birthday, she called the radio station and was able to make contact with Danny's mother. When Ashley found out that she and Danny were the same blood type, she said she couldn't think of anything she'd rather do for her birthday than give the gift of life. So a medical team put her through all the required testing and discovered she was a perfect match for the transplant. Danny's mom began calling Ashley a little angel right from the start. And just before they went into surgery, Danny gave Ashley a jewelry box with the words, Ashley, you're an angel, engraved on it. Hours later, they were both recovering from the surgery. They both came through it just fine. By Memorial Day that year, they sensed something between them. By early June, they were dating. And by Christmas, in fact, on Christmas Day, that same year, Danny asked Ashley to marry him. You never know where a loving act might lead. Ashley, who could think of anything she'd rather do on her 25th birthday than give someone else the gift of life, began a whole new life herself. Whenever Christians are willing to give, good things happen. Smiles appear on faces, hearts fill with hope and joy and love. Friendships form. Whenever Christians are willing to give, people experience the love of Jesus and God receives glory. And no one throughout all of history has given more for God's glory than Jesus. Our Bible reading is going to help us think about that this morning. About all that Jesus gave for you and for me and for all the people of the world. I'll be reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, <clears throat> verses 9 through 14. As the Father loved me, I too have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I kept my Father's commandments and remain in His love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy will be in you, and your joy will be complete. This is my commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. No one has greater love than to give up one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. This is the word of the Lord. From the very moment Jesus left heaven to come down to earth, he was giving for us. He gave up his place in his Father's beautiful kingdom where he experienced nothing but perfection, joy and peace. 
peace and love and glory unlike anything we've ever known. Jesus gave that up to come live in an imperfect world with imperfect people. As he began his ministry, Jesus gave up a life of relative anonymity. He put himself out there for the world to see, out in public where many people would misunderstand him, even his own family, and where some people would hate him, despise him, and oppose everything he did. As Jesus selected his first and closest followers, the apostles, he gave them an opportunity to live with him, to travel with him, to be a part of what he was doing in the world. Jesus gave the truth to everyone who would listen, explaining that life lived for God was not about keeping a list of rules above all else. Religion was not to be cold and calculated and harsh. Living for God was about love, loving God, loving people. It was a matter of the heart. Jesus gave instruction and prayer so his followers would be able to connect with the Father. He gave lessons out of the kingdom. He gave food to the hungry, drink to the thirsty. He gave blessings to children. He gave money to the temple. He gave the government what it was due by paying taxes. He gave grace to people caught in sin, in sin. Instead of condemning them, he gave them forgiveness. He gave them hope for a better life by encouraging them and challenging them to go and to sin no more. Jesus gave acceptance to outcasts. He gave them respect and value. He gave them their humanity back. He gave healing and wholeness to the sick, the blind, the deaf, the mute, the lame. On a number of occasions, Jesus raised the dead, giving them life. He, Jesus gave joy to all who accepted him. He gave and he gave and he gave with genuine love. As his days on earth were coming to an end, Jesus rode into the city of Jerusalem on a donkey to give the greatest gift of all. Many people hoped that he was about to lead a revolt to run the Romans out. And they were ready to give Jesus their full support, their loyalty. They were ready to give their lives for him. But that's not who Jesus was. That's not what he was about. Jesus didn't come into the world to lead a revolt against an earthly power. He wasn't here to fight and kill humans. He wasn't going to take a single life and no human was going to give his or her life for him. Jesus came into the world to give his life so our lives could be changed. Jesus came to give, and he did, to the very end. And giving is what he calls us to do, to love each other just as he loves us. So when we love, we give. We give to make life better for others. Some are even willing to give their lives for others. Members of the military put their lives on the line every single day. Many give their lives to make life better for us. Good parents give their lives for their children. In most cases, they don't physically die for them, but they certainly give things up. They sacrifice for them to make life better. They choose to drive a family car, an SUV, maybe a minivan instead of a luxury car. They spend money on, set money aside for the needs of their young children instead of buying themselves every big boy or big girl toy that's out there. Good neighbors also gladly give for the people around them. I read about a Christian man who had just bought a new car. He had it parked in his driveway. Well, his neighbor had a basketball goal for his kids right next to that driveway. And the basketball goal somehow fell down onto that man's shiny new car. And it did some real damage. So what did the man do? Nothing. Well, he put the basketball goal back on his neighbor's property. But he never said a thing about the damage to his car to his neighbor. When one of his friends asked him about it, 
on it. He said, it's just a car. And I don't want to risk letting something like that come between me and one of my neighbors. It's just not worth it. My relationship with him means so much more. That man truly has his priorities straight. He understands giving and living like Jesus. How would you handle something like that? Hopefully you'll never have to. But you will, we all will, have plenty of opportunities to give, especially with everything going on in the world around us today. Many of us are already giving in many different ways. Because if you think about it, you realize you can give just about any time, anywhere. That was the topic of a daily devotional I read just a while back. I'm going to share it with you this morning, but before I do, I want to remind you of some stats that I gave during worship, uh, during my message, message, probably about two or three months ago. The first one was this, 10% of the world's population lives on less than $1.90 a day. 25% of the world's population lives on less than $3.20 a day. 50% of the world's population lives on less than $5.50 a day. And finally, if you make at least $32,400 a year, you have income greater than 99% of the world's population. You're in the, one, the top 1% of wage earners around the world. Now with those stats in mind, I'll share the devotion with you. It begins with a reading from 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy 16, verses 17 through 19. Tell people who are rich at this time not to become egotistical and not to place their hope on their finances, which are uncertain. Instead, they need to hope in God, who richly provides everything for our enjoyment. Tell them to do good, to be rich in the good things they do, to be generous, and to share with others. When they do these things, they will save a treasure for themselves that is a good foundation for the future. That way, they can take hold of what is truly life. So here's the story that goes with that reading. The phone rang late one night after Robert had already gone to bed. It was his friend Jim. Jim said, I'm sorry for calling so late, buddy, but I had to give you something. Give me something, Robert asked. Then Jim explained that he recently promised himself and God that he'd give something away every day for a year. He said, it doesn't have to be a big deal. I've given a quarter to a kid who lost money in a candy machine, a book I enjoy reading to someone who I thought would like it. But I realized just a few minutes ago I hadn't given away anything today, so I decided to call you. What are you going to give me over the phone, Robert asked. It may not be much, Jim answered, but it's something. Then he read Robert a short poem that expressed his deep love and respect for him. It was a simple gift, but it touched Robert's heart. Imagine giving away something every day for a whole year. Or for a month? How about a week? It might not be that hard. And that kind of generosity, that kind of commitment to giving, blesses many people. Of course, it blesses the people who receive. But more than anyone else, it blesses the person who gives. Do you think you could do something like that? Give away something every day for one week? What would you give away? A cup of coffee? Lunch? Your time? A kind word? Encouragement? A smile? Something from that pile of stuff you're waiting to sell in a garage sale? What would you give away? I'm challenging you to give it a try this week. There's no better time than right now. Try to give something away every day for a 
from right now through next Sunday. If you do, you'll be taking hold of what is truly life. You'll be living and giving like Jesus. Good things will happen. Lives will be changed. And God will receive glory. Would you please pray with me? Almighty gracious God, you've given us everything we are and everything we have. You blessed us. You blessed us so you can bless the world through us. Inspire generosity in our hearts, Lord, so we can take hold of what is truly life. We ask this in the name of Jesus, whose goodness, mercy, and love will never fail. Amen. Mm -hmm.